So we've had a bit of a play around with some of our preset sort of shapes. Um, and now we're starting to look at some of the modifiers. And really, it's going to be up to you to sort of develop your skills and play around and experiment. And that's going to be the best way for you guys to essentially get a strong sort of foundation within the freeform environment. And a lot of it is sort of thinking a bit more laterally about how an object um, might be modelled once you've sort of got an idea about your shape. I, I want to show you this example here, which is essentially um, starting to look like some sort of handle form, okay? And essentially how this was made. And when we go into the edit space, you can see that a lot of the story can be told essentially by what the faces and edges are doing here, okay? And so the purpose of this video is I just want to dig into some of these modifiers a little bit more and just some of the tricks to kind of get things um, to essentially give you some results, all right? So what I might do is we're going to create a cylinder. We're going to create it next door. So we've sort of got a reference point. We can look at it a bit. And you can see with this one, one, two, three, four. So it was four high and looks like it was probably eight faces in diameter. So we're about the same. Okay, so how do we get that and start to do something like this? The obvious thing first off the bat is we've got to come in and we've got to edit our form. Now a nice trick um, within this space is I can click on an edge um, what I can also do is if I double click, it will give me the loop, okay? So it's essentially all those edges that are um, going, joining end to end, essentially. Double click and it gives me the loop. So that's a really powerful way to be able to start modifying things. Okay, so if I grab that loop, for instance, and maybe I want to move it around, or maybe what I want to do is I just want to make it a bit bigger. Okay, and maybe I'll just shift it down a little bit. And we can see that we're starting to create a bit of a form. And then I'll go, okay, that's good. Um, maybe with these guys, I just want to compress them a little bit on that axis. Well, maybe what I'll do is I want to stay um, oop, incorrect, come back. I I want the form to still sort of change in relation to everything. So I might just squash it a bit like that. And I apologize, I tend to work in pretty like, you know, I'll be working upside down looking into something and all sorts of weird stuff at times. My chest. Cool. Okay. So I'm starting to generate, you know, the shape's not identical, but it's it's sort of in the same guise. And the thing I'm interested in though is how do I get these sort of ripples here? You can see that there are additional faces, there are additional edges that have been added in here. Okay. So what I can do is if I come up to my modify and insert edge, you'll see that I can click on an edge and it's giving me the option to add edges. Okay. Can be a bit tricky sometimes doing multiple lines at once. Um, Often it will be a little bit of a pig and, and not want to play ball with you in situations like that. Uh, you can do both sides. Obviously, I just want to keep it single sides at this point because I've already done those ones. Okay, But you can see in this situation, this is where I'm starting to take advantage of some of those modifiers where I'm essentially starting to add a bit more definition in this area um, because I'm going to want to try and make some modifications. Now, 
if we come here, you can see I'm double clicking on those and I'm getting the loop, but the loop finishes here because it's, it doesn't extend around the form. Okay, come back in and I go edit form. Now I've got just those three edges. I could have been in the edit form workspace first, I might just add. Um, now you can see that by expanding those, I'm now starting to get you know those sort of rippling shapes as if like I'm starting to build some sort of ergonomic handle type shape. Okay, and so it's really just a case of looking at your object. And again, you can see how quickly I can modify away from that, and thinking about where do I need detail to help me adjust this shape to get to where I want to go. And really it's going to be a case of experimentation for you at the start to kind of get your head around what sort of modifying tools are available to you. Okay, But largely at the start I would recommend just playing around with being able to insert points or inserting edges also, subdivide is good, so essentially you're dividing a face into a subset of faces, okay? And essentially, when you need it, that's when you start adding in the detail. Prior to that, try and keep it as simple as you can, okay? So that's how I've sort of managed to get that shape to there. And again, I could then think about um, how do I want to finish this object? Do I want to cap it? top and bottom by doing something like a bridge um, or do I want to cut it in half because I'm going to join it to something else and then merge down the track okay also remember that these forms are you know relative to each other there is the potential to be able to join them together as well by using something like a bridge. So the options become, um, I would say, arguably uh, limitless very quickly in terms of how much and how far you can go into the detail, um, which offers you a great level of flexibility in terms of your freeform molding. The other thing to note with this is that when you have your objects that you've been working with, in this case they were empty, but if I come back to these examples I made previously, these um, preset shapes, the, uh, the cubes for instance, these are solid bodies and we also have the ability um, not only to modify them um, through the freeform modifying space, okay, but we can actually modify them on a parametric level as well, okay? And again, that's where the real beauty of Fusion starts to shine, okay? So, for instance, with this object here, again, like the example over here, um, I want to now be able to engage this with another component, okay? So maybe what I want to do is I want to put a hole into the underside of it for it to then locate. So if I come in and I create a sketch on my bottom plane, and I'll just create just a pretty standardized hole, um, we can see that because I'm drawing a sketch, I have all that great control that comes with parametric modeling. So you can see that this sketch is now fully defined. I started on the origin, I've given it a dimension, it's not going anywhere, okay? Now, if I go to finish sketch and extrude and I draw this, it's a cut operation. You can see that I've used parametric modeling techniques to modify a free form object. Okay, and that's where the really exciting potentials exist is that I can create beautiful sculpted shapes maybe not necessarily this one's a bit weird, um, but I can create, you know, really interesting freeform shapes, but then I have the power of parametric modeling to be able to get them to relate to each other, but also to be able to come back and update that later as well, very easily, 
So in this case, oh, actually, I've toleranced this incorrectly, and I want to make it 45. And you can see it instantly updates. And that's the beautiful thing about this software, is it allows us to make interesting fluid objects quite quickly and easily, but then be able to utilize the power of parametric modeling to be able to keep it within some realm of um, versatility when it comes to having to manufacture.